Welcome to Captain of Industry. My name is Nilaus, and as you hopefully know, Captain of Industry is releasing in early access on Steam on the 31st of May. Depending on what you're watching it, maybe it is out already, maybe it's not. I'm playing this on the early alpha version available to backers and content creators, so it might not be the same, the exact same thing you're seeing on the release date. However, I thought that it would be a good idea to go through some of the mechanics to get you prepared for this game when it comes out on uh, for release because this game unlike some of the other factory games has a lot of traps in it and what i mean by that is it is possible to fail the game and be in an unrecoverable state and let's try to avoid that because that can lead a lot to a lot of frustration uh, when playing and then you sort of run out of maintenance or unity or electricity or fuel or food or any other things yes all of those things have uh, happened to me and i want to be here to help you not uh, do the same mistakes. So we'll go through the guides, uh, we'll go through these features and functionality just very briefly so that you are prepared to how they interact. And I'm going to use this base that I've been playing in a previous series about half a year ago as our template for explaining the mechanics. The very first thing to talk about is some of the things that set this game apart from other factory games. One of them being that we start with this ship that we uh, sort of uh, shipwrecked on this little location. This is what we have. We have our population up here with a few uh, people here. We have our dock that's kind of broken. Uh, we have a derelict location that we can sort of strip for materials. And then we have, very crucially, these trucks. The trucks are, and that's why I want to, to emphasize here, is those are the core points of how you interact with the game in the beginning. So in the beginning, you will start recycling this location and that will just highlight it for, for now that we can strip it for resources. What we'll then do is as soon as we start wanting to build something that could be such as a coal maker from uh, f taking, taking wood and turning it into coal would be a very good idea. Uh, what does this require? It requires 20 construction parts and we want to make sure that we are not <laughs> paused the game. Uh, so what we'll see is hopefully we'll see that we get some resources being picked up from our shipyard that's broken. We start with some raw materials here. Construction parts is an integral part of it and they'll be used for, well, basically any kind of construction. And the trucks work Dare I say, a bit like uh, construction drones and logistics drones in Factorio, although you won't have as many of them. It works in the sense that you can then, they will be bringing stuff to a location. And then once they, the construction materials are there, then it will start working. And then they have a recipe and you can change the recipes once there are multiple recipes. Now, the next thing we want to do is start harvesting some trees. I'll highlight these trees and then I will be assigning a, tra a truck to be, uh, uh, be assigned to the trees. And if we just zoom out a bit faster, we can see that they are going in. They'll go into this location and then we'll start seeing that we'll have one input and two outputs coal, which is the what we want. And then we'll also have exhaust. This is one of the things that's super important about uh, this game is that it has a lot of, of mixed products. So lots of things outbound that we need to be managed as well. Here we make a smokestack so we can get rid of the exhaust because otherwise it gets stuck. Like in other games, if you can't get rid of your outputs, it gets stuck. The process gets stuck. Here we have the production process. The production process works and then it will be outputting the exhaust. The exhaust goes here and gets away. So basically the vehicles work like this. We're going to be zooming a bit forward to show you how they interact with the mining because that's when it gets a bit more complicated. Mining resources is the next topic on our list of things because it also heavily interacts with vehicles, as you can see here. They consist of two different vehicles types we have in here. We have the small excavator and we also have this pickup truck. The small excavator will be assigned to a location and then it will start working in that location. This works by having a mining depot. Now things get, start to look a lot more complicated. Uh, what happens here is that when you build a mining depot, you highlight an area, this is the yellow box, and that's within this area that the mining, the mining excavators that are assigned will be operating. They'll only be operating on stuff inside here. And what they will do is, uh, is what you can then do is you go over to the excavator thing here. That's the excavator tool. And then we have, this is level two is exactly where we are. And if I wanted to sort of build a ramp down, for example, from here, and then I can make a little ramp down there, for example, that would uh, allow me to start making a ramp further down. And when I click here, you can see that they will be highlighting. So you can you can mine away the, the actual infrastructure here. This mountain will be mined away and uh, you can sort of 
get all the resources here. They will also be in the ground. You can do that. And then you can also build ramps like this by unloading the waste material on, uh, on places. And that will just sort of work to build ramps or work to build uh, piers out here in the ocean. So it is a fully deconstructible map or a transformable map. The way it works, as we look at this, um, I'm not really happy about this one I did, made here. doesn't matter. Uh, I have the miners, the excavating miners, they are working here. And uh, they will need to have some vehicles to unload on. So therefore, I take some vehicles and specifically assign them to this area. So they will be, as you can see here, they will be assigned to this area and they'll be waiting. So once one of them fills up, then it will a new one will come in and will start to be filled up. It grabs some coal, puts it on here. If it grabs something that isn't coal, because there's also some rocks and slag and that kind of thing, then it'll just hold it until another train come, another truck comes in to take pick up this. You can only have one item on a truck at any given time. They will then come over here, and they basically they'll be standing here to wait. You can also see that the stuff we just highlighted it's already getting started. They will already start digging in here. And what you will then also see is that it is, well, some of it will be coal, but some of it also would be dirt. They will be uh, going to this location and then they'll sort of be waiting until they have locations that they can go to. For example, this one is requesting coal. This is a storage location that is requesting coal. And then it from the coal, it goes out onto a storage uh, or onto a conveyor belt and goes into a production line. But let's uh, finish up on the vehicles. So basically you have your vehicles. If you look at the vehicle overview, they can either be assigned to uh, to just general logistics where they bring in stuff for construction or just bring things between different production plants. They can be assigned to mining operations or they can be assigned to tree harvesting. And that is just basically that balance you have to strike at any given time, how many you want to assign to what different tasks to keep the whole thing flowing. Moving on to the next topic as the rain is pouring down and that will be the actual production chains because these are essential. This is where the entire logistics part comes in. One of the key things you will see here is that it is both very slow and also very elaborate. Uh, it has very much a very industrial look and feel to it and uh, there are many ways to do it and I'm sure we have not found the best ways to do it yet. So uh, this is just one way that I build it and I kind of like it but it certainly also has some, some flaws. Uh, in the beginning you will not have these conveyor belts and you will not have these storage chests, well uh, tanks, storage silos, uh, but you will then have the trucks coming in here and delivering to the smelters. The smelters will, if we go out of this mode, uh, they will be having different recipes. First, we'll convert metal scrap and coal into molten iron exhaust. But then later on, we get the iron ore that we can mine and the coal that we just saw mining over here. Get that in, get it into molten iron and then slag and exhaust. So we have to manage all of the outputs. For example, in this case, you can see that we have here we come here come the molten iron. It goes into this location. It gets into here and half of it goes into the first location and half goes into the second location. These will then convert the molten iron into iron plates and the iron plates will just roll out here on the belt and get stored into a box that I've then set up to be uh, emptied automatically so that it doesn't run full. This one is also a loose storage of the slag. The slag can be used to make concrete or just put it into the ocean or make uh, ramps and stuff like that. But it's important that these things do not run, run full. So these are input things where I want to highlight that they want to be full. When they're full, they want to be kept full and these wants to be kept not full because then it sucks. It gets stuck. And those kind of processes are sort of repeated uh, everywhere. This one is uh, a process for Another thing, this is for construction parts, which will gradually transition into the next part. Construction parts is probably the most important thing that you can build and you have to keep, keep track of making sure that you build in your base uh, because uh, everything is built with construction parts. If I want to build a new building of whatever type, a vehicle depot, for example, it says that I need 40, yeah, cost 40 construction parts, something else cost 20 construction parts, this one cost 40 construction parts plus 20 of the tier 2 construction parts, and so on and so forth. Most things require construction parts as uh, uh, in order to be built. So what I've done here is I am building, again, setting up a logistics storage. These ones are requesting concrete slabs, wood and iron going in here, getting processed. Uh, we're still not having all of it coming in. So what are we missing? We're missing some concrete slabs. And then we'll just go in here. Some get stored because I need some of the ones. And the rest, this is a splitter. Goes into the other one where it gets mixed in with copper and then builds the tier two. And that will also be put into a box. 
So this is a, this is basically means that we you now have construction parts available, but I think a little nice location here. So they gradually, as you elab make your base more elaborate, you will have things that get more and more automated and then sort of have the long haul things being transported by trucks. And then the sort of the internal logistics here being handled by belts. And then gradually, maybe you can get a belt over from a copper smelting into here, maybe from the other ones into there, if you want to go all spaghetti, or you can sort of leave the trucks being taken care of some part of the logistics network uh, for you. Next up, we have population and food. Because uh, who's driving the trucks? Who's working in the machine, in the factories? Well, your people are working in the factories. They live in these uh, uh, artistically oriented uh, container villages. And uh, well, uh, if you have a, a game with population, you are also gonna need to keep them fed. So here is the next part of it as well. This is also the food. So food, you uh, we, may, we, we feed them potatoes. You can get more and then more advanced food as well later on. And this is just yet another system you have to be aware of and uh, make sure that it does not run out. So you have to uh, do some, some prop rotation where you plant some potatoes and then leave it fallow and then potatoes and fallow and so on and so forth. So the fertility is, uh, it is kept high. You need to make sure that you can, you get water either by irrigating the farm automatically or uh, in the least in the beginning, hoping that it rains. And also just uh, getting train trucks to bring in water is if necessary. So you need to make sure that you have enough food for your population, otherwise they will be unhappy. And you need to make sure that as you continue to build your base, every single building has a requirement for how many resources are needed in this uh, particular building. And that is something that you always have to keep track of. So for example, a maintenance depot requires a lot of people. So as you uh, keep in building your base, you also have to keep track of making sure that you grow your population, make new places for them to live, make sure that you have uh, constantly producing food for them because you can't just buy food, you have to farm it yourself. And also the food will then need water as well. So you can see that there's a long chain of things that all have to be worked together. And if any of one of these fails, then uh, well, the whole thing fails, honestly. As your base grows, buildings get more elaborate, farms get irrigated automatically. How does all of this happen? Well, it all happens through research. And we have some research facilities here. Uh, they are very simple. It's one of the first things you build in the game. You build a research facility, and this one will be uh, depending on the lab research it'll use some a resource called unity that we'll explain in a bit and then maybe it'll use some uh, some power as well depending on the level and we'll also come back to the electricity very very simple simply it is uh, researching up here we can see here this is the research and we have a very elaborate research tree that uh, stretches on and 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 on. Yeah, uh, there is a lot of things going on here, and uh, you just every single thing is uh, is something interesting. A new building, a upgrade to the ship that will also be coming into, uh, and all these things are just going to be incremental improvements and then new features being added to the game and more complex processes as we go in here. You get start getting some really complex processes for synthetic rubber. Uh, construction parts. Let's uh, see if we can find something out here that has some interesting processes here as well. Uh, and then things get really advanced and that will be progressively more difficult to make sure that you get this, but you also get new features that are also interesting. Like, hey, wouldn't it be nice to have a greenhouse, for example? Or wouldn't it be nice to have a very, very advanced formula for crushed iron or coal limestone into molten iron slag and exhaust? Yes, of course it would. That's exactly what we want. And then all of these things are in here. Basically, the more of these you build, well, the faster you get new research. I would say that you don't really need a lot. Getting more research faster isn't really beneficial because you can easily get to a point where you've unlocked 10 different new researchers and you don't know how to use them yet so uh, it's it's probably just a good idea just build one maybe build two a bit later and then just uh, see when what research you get see what you'd like to have and then uh, start using that new feature uh, instead of sort of being 10 things ahead and then when you open these menus they have lots of buildings that you have no idea how to how to use yet uh, so that's at least a recommendation just don't go overboard on the sign on the research part but hey it's necessary to get that research so how do we keep the cohesion intact in the, our little village or factory or whatever it is? Well, that is all about the Unity. Unity is a special mechanic that's easy to ignore and, and think of it as just a 
<laughs> just a, a, a another resource that's going to be used by some things and you need to make sure that you have greater than zero but it's also a really valuable resource when building things uh, to speed up uh, the production so let's have a look at the unity you have unity up here when we have a unity number then we have a either in growth or a decrease basically the way it works is that uh, you can see this population overview which is also out there. so we get unity if we have enough food for our people if they have enough electricity if they have enough water if they have these things we get extra unity then we can use the unity uh, let me see go back to this one we can use the unity for different things to keep going for example as i mentioned before research each one of these takes some monthly consumption of unity and uh, then there's the, the beacon here, which will help us attract new people. It takes one unity and it attracts more people uh, to our our location. So that's how we get population growth generally. And uh, so those are sort of the upkeep things that you you can uh, you can get it. Then as we go a bit later, we can also get into the, what is called the captain's office, where we can have some edicts where we can sort of make make sure that you customize your your um, your factory or your civilization or your your, your colony here in a way that say, okay, well, if I have lots of food, then turn up the food consumption in order to get more unity. Or if I am running out of fuel, fuel station is out of fuel, well, maybe I'll apply an edict about fuel saver so I can sort of save on the fuel until I've established some better fuel upkeep or maintenance, maybe running low and then, which will also be coming to. Uh, so you can sort of tailor your, your, your colony in order to sort of make some stop gaps or utilize any excess uh, to to get more unity it's important to keep make sure that you have a positive unity uh, because this unity is also used in case i wanted to build something so for example if i want to build another one of uh, these i don't like that it's in planning mode there so once you look at this that looks weird um this is what we are building and you can set it to priority. You can then also do a quick deliver. This will cost 3.7 unity. But if I just smash this one, it'll then instantly, instead of waiting for the trucks to come on over, then it'll instantly bring in all the resources. And then of course the unity gets subtracted and it will be built here. This is incredibly important or if useful if I build something far away and I don't want to wait for all of my resources to come in. Then let's say I want to start using using this iron facility well i uh, how would i start doing that well i would uh, definitely be making a mine control tower mind control tower no mine control tower here and it's going to take forever to get here so i just hit that 1.1 unity that's not much and then it will sort of get here immediately and if i wasn't uh, paused then it would uh, it would build it instantly so again instead of waiting for the tr the trucks to get all the way up here then boom we have our Mind control tower, mind control, mind control, whatever. It's a bad, bad name because I keep saying mind control tower and I'd wish I had a mind control tower, but that's something completely different. So what is uh, important is that when you, for example, have a important piece of infrastructure, let's say a line here that you want to move it up in to a different location, then as soon as you take it out, then you have, will stall out your existing production and then you want to re-establish it quickly and that's a good idea to use unity for those kind of things just hurry up and get that built so always make sure that you have some unity if you suddenly for example run out of fuel then you need to instantly jump on over and fix it and there might be some some buffers or some storage that need to be built and you need to build them fast and that's what unity is for uh, it makes a lot of sense and it is a super amazing way of uh, of of just uh, being able to do things fast because you absolutely need it. There will be disasters coming left and right and being able to respond quickly with Unity is super important. So uh, don't just sort of keep it for upkeep, but also uh, make sure that you have a positive so you can use it for, for building things fast. One of the things about this game that um, I really like and is also makes it a very difficult game is that there are a lot of mechanics to keep track of. For example, when we have a vehicle, let's look at a very innocent little vehicle here. There are a number of things that you need to make sure of. You may need to make sure that it has maintenance and it has fuel. So without having maintenance and fuel, you will not be able to operate. And if it runs out of either, 
then you are very uh, likely to end up in a death spiral that you cannot get out of. So we will talk about the fuel and also the uh, maintenance. We'll talk about maintenance first because that's the first thing you're going to be running out of in the game. Uh, you will need to build a maintenance depot. And maintenance depot, as you can see here, it takes the power, it takes a lot of workers, and all it builds is maintenance. And you can get a maintenance over here on the right hand side. You can see how much maintenance you have. You want to make sure that that uh, remains high. If they start breaking down or if they start not having enough maintenance, then they will break down. And if they break down, then they don't work. And then they start delivering things to your maintenance. And then you can't build more maintenance to get them working again. So it can easily be a death spiral. So make sure that you have a maintenance setup and do it before you uh, you actually run out of it. It's also something that is going to take a lot of resources, just continually uh, burning through resources in your, uh, your colony. And that's uh, one of the things that I really like about it is that even though you have like lots of resources here, then you also have a constant demand in order to just keep the whole thing going by with maintenance and of course production into construction paths to build more bases, but also like fuel and maintenance as well. So maintenance, a super difficult mechanic to get your head around. And even though it's just like this small thing, it's so easy to sort of slip up and then not have enough and then only notice it when you're absolutely in dire straits. No logistics game would be complete without having oil production and uh, refining as well. So this is the other part of what I mentioned before about the maintenance and fuel. Here we have a, a very, very simple oil to fuel process. What we have here is we have some oil pumps. They are pumping and they will just go three of these pumps. They are going into one location here and that will be going to a basic distiller. have a very simple process that makes some diesel, some wastewater and some exhaust. Here comes another interesting thing. What are we going to do with the exhaust? We just put it in the uh, in the atmosphere. What do we do about the wastewater? We just pour it in the ocean. Uh, that's not really sustainable solutions, is it? But uh, yeah, that that is what <laughs> that is what we do right now. Uh, what we also can see here is that we have a fuel depot, a fuel station. So we leave it, have this with fuel. And we bring it into a fuel station. This fuel station now also has fuel trucks. You can see that some of these are assigned to here. That means these will be going out and transporting fuel to excavators, for example, instead of having the excavators go back and forth. It's a really neat way to uh, to sort of save on uh, on our resource instead of everything, and especially the excavators who are super slow coming all the way over to the fuel depot. Then you can build this or multiple fuel depots around the base, and then they will be transporting it out. So fuel depots. Uh, very nice. The other thing is something here. I can turn that on. This is a simple diesel generator. Uh, it doesn't produce much power, but it's, it's how we get started on, uh, on this. It uh, produces power as we are needing it. And yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be your first uh, access to power is going to use oil. And it's also going to use coal for this uh, process. So coal is super important. Make sure you stay on top of your coal because coal is used for all of the refining processes and all of the yeah also oil refining process and so also for power uh, as we get later into the game we can start making some different types of uh, process you can see here we have a boiler that's a coal boiler uh, it boils some some steam the steam goes in here into becoming high steam and then converts it into mechanical power and goes out of low steam the mechanical power gets converted into these generators and then they will be uh, feeding the network so that is basically sort of a more advanced way of doing this i'm also pumping water out of the ground and now i've shown two ways of things just magically whipping things out of the ground groundwater here and also over at the other location i i said that we could just pump out oil it is not so that we can actually just pump out anything from anywhere there are resource nodes on the map and that is the next thing so as we take an overall look at our colony as it uh, as it stands right now, then uh, you can see that there are, there are a lot of things going on. And as we mentioned, we are pumping water somewhere, we're pumping oil somewhere. Well, there is an overlay here and that overlay is layers. You can see where the different resources are located. All of this place is where we can pump out groundwater. Also this location, we can pump out groundwater. This location is coal and also not just coal, but also how much coal there is. Uh, over here we have uh, limestone, uh, we have, what was this, that is that color, copper ore, okay, that's an interesting color, uh, here we have some more limestone, uh, sand actually, uh, we have brown water, we have iron up here, iron ore, and you can also see I'm, I'm building out 
random locations here more sand and uh, the very small patch is over here the oil we are basically out of oil on our location here there is no more oil uh, anywhere to be found and we'll need to find another way to get oil into our factory here because well there's no more oil on this location which is interestingly enough uh, since that's uh, leading us gracefully into the next topic how are we going to get our oil into our facility or any other resource that we don't have at this point well we started up with a broken ship this broken this ship is not broken anymore it is uh, it is crude ready and it also has uh, I, can we see it there yeah it also has uh, guns and plating and bridge and stuff like that so it is uh, it's a good ship it can do stuff so let's uh, have a look at what the ship can actually do for us so with this ship we have access to exploration trading and combat uh, i'm gonna skip the combat because i am uh, full of hope that combat will be something that they will be they'll look better than it looked in uh, in the uh, in the version that I played here, and uh, I'll just keep my fingers crossed. It is early access, so that is perfectly fine. That uh, it, there are some things that are not quite ready yet. If we click here, we also get the map. So uh, this map starts with our little island, and from here we can explore out, depending on sort of how much. You can see I've explored a lot. Basically, it works the way that you go to one of the question marks, and then you will be finding that location and then see what's there. So for example, this one, I can't get to this one. This is simply too far away. But if I go to this one and we explore, then we will get there. It'll take 93 days. So it's going to take basically forever to get there. This game just uh, takes a while, but we'll explore to that location. You will not be able to explore to a location if you're not able to do a round trip to come back to the location. When you get to a location, it can be certain different things. Most of them will just be a discovery of a location and you get some some goodies that kind of thing it could also be for example this one will be pirates and then to when you can engage in combat uh, two ships with 170 battle score uh, i don't know maybe um but you can also find settlements that you can upgrade and these settlements allow you to trade if you for example need some diesel but you have a lot of of construction part then you can do some trade it also costs unity just like that products are delivered to your trading dock immediately that's really nice or if you are about to run out of food then that's also a good way of of trading here so you will be able to do uh, different different ways of trading this one can be trained you can also buy more population and uh, simply i don't like the word buying more population that has a bad connotation let's say uh, enticing people monetarily to uh, to come join your your colony that's that's better here we can do some training these are the early game training that you have available so for example you will have a lot of wood on in the beginning and you can then trade the wood into concrete slabs that's a good trade to do in the beginning because you concrete slabs are a bit of a complex process while wood is well just chopping down trees and who wouldn't want to chop down any tree in sight definitely i would there are also locations such as this where you actually have oil facility and you need to build an oil location at the site if you do that you can also see it consumes unity just to keep that alive and then we'll be able to uh, to feed oil and then we'll be bringing it back to your base uh, as well uh, with a dedicated ship so now we have arrived at this location so area is located and uh, we found a new uh, found some loot 16 population some rubber some copper and some electronics Ray, and we can then for example try go back we don't have enough to to go all the way so we'll just have to go home and then we'll uh, We'll do another exploration. When it comes home, it'll fix the damage on the ship and it will um, it'll then unload the stuff that we found out there. It'll unload the extra populations. We only have seven workers available. As you can see, the population has grown quite a lot. And so that basically is sort of the mechanics that I wanted to show you. So vehicles, mining, construction parts, population, food, research, unity, maintenance, fuel, electricity, and ship exploration as well. So those are all of the things that you need to keep in mind when playing this game. And uh, any one of those will set you behind or can give you a tremendous effort, uh, benefits. I'll be doing lots of guides, let's play, live stream, all that good stuff to cover this game as it comes out. So uh, do make sure that you are a subscribe to the channel so that you will keep up to date there will be lots of content make sure that you drop by my twitch team it is twitch tv slash neilaus i'm streaming uh, almost every day at 8 p.m central european time and uh, yeah half the days will be captain industry for the foreseeable future because i really want to get into this game and of course there will be lots of youtube guides here so uh, make sure that you st stay up to date if you want to support the channel then uh, 
hit the like and uh, subscribe. And if you want to do a bit more than that, then I do have a patron that uh, is possible to support, support the channel so that we, I can keep doing what I do here. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you are enjoying this and I hope that you will be following along for more Captain of Industry here on the channel. Until next time, take care and as always, stay effective.